Would you all please rise for the pledge? Mm -hmm. The pledge of allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clerk, would you call the roll? Patrick. Bruner. Yes. Else. Yes. Farnham. Yes. Larton. Here. Ludington. Here. Voigt. Here. Okay. Uh, was there any public comment this morning? Scotty, you got anything you want to say? No, other than we have a uh, new uh, administrator, I guess, or if you want to call it a uh, uh, chief, uh, what is that called there? Uh, it's not president, it's... Uh, oh, you mean they're chairman of the... Government? Yeah, chairman. Uh, Dr. Rico and uh, I'm vice chair, so we're uh, going to see what we can work with the health department and hopefully we keep moving it forward. Has your other new members started or attended meetings? Yeah. Rodney? Yeah. Okay. And we do have a vacancy. Uh, Kathy Lentz did uh, resign, so we're looking forward to uh, Scotty and uh, Dr. Rico and Lisa coming up with uh, somebody they would like to see uh, me uh, recommend to you guys to approve for the board. Okay? Thank you, Scotty. Uh, next, we've got three purposes for being here today uh, at this close or at this uh, special meeting. And the first one is bidding the courthouse roof. We're planning on advertising that on the this coming Saturday. The core has got the bid along uh, set up along with uh, Michael. And so everything's moving forward. There's going to be a walkthrough on uh, January 11th where the least two contractors that have, they've been contacted, they'll be uh, walking through and planning to bid. So just a, a pre-bid walkthrough. So are there any questions about what that entails? Yes. So what's the material? Well, that they're going to bid that an alternate. Okay. Uh, you're going to have slate, and then they're going to bid uh, the type of slate that's man-made, okay? And we'll have duration figures and everything on that. Do I have a motion to authorize bidding for the courthouse roof? Okay, Phil moves. Russ, Russ seconds. Any further discussion? Okay, uh, hearing none, all those, in, I'm sorry, would you please call the roll just for the heck of it? Yes, certainly. Bruner? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Farnham? Yeah. Lawton? Yes. Ludington? Yes. Is approved. Next is a new thing that you haven't heard of, and we're not actually going to approve the lease. I didn't say that right to Augie. The state of Illinois, well, that's what happened. The state of Illinois, uh, actually, pretrial services has come to us and they would like to rent office space in the uh, new building out of the Diamond Brothers, which I guess would be the, the office annex. We need to start calling it by what, we, what it actually is. They need one office, and uh, tentatively, you pass that around. This is the key floor plan for the facility. And they're interested in, once you get it, let me know. They're interested in office number 29, which is in the lower left side. Uh, that is basically a 12 by 8 uh, this, uh, office, and they would, uh, have, uh, they would have their office there. Uh, they are offering 13 to 14 dollars a square foot, but I don't know exactly what until we, they, first of all, we need, I need to make sure the board is even interested in doing this. And in order to make sure that you're interested in doing this, 
Uh, I need to let you know that their clients, and I don't know what else to call them, but their clients uh, are not going to be in this facility. They will meet with them in the courthouse. Uh, you know where the courtroom that we use, adjacent to it, in fact it shares a wall, and I forget exactly what's on the door, but it used to be uh, an office that the public defender used. It's a very long and narrow office. And that, well, uh, I talked to uh, uh, Angie, and she does not need that office. And she's willing to clean her stuff out and have them use that office for meeting with their clients. Additionally, I was able to get with Nathan, and, who is the public defender, and ask him how, what, if he was interested in anything in this facility, and he said, "Oh, I've got the wrong, I've got the wrong room. It's, uh, it's 22 is the room that she's interested in." Down yeah, by the kitchen. That's what I was going to say. I'm sorry. I old, I rotated that around. 29. That's going to interfere with me. No, no, the no. Assessor. No. I, it's 22. All right. Sorry. Okay. At any rate, in the uh, back. And he would also be delighted to start using that room at the courthouse because he says a lot of times when he's in court, if they, if he tells them to come over the office, they disappear. That way he can just walk with them and meet with them for a while and talk to his clients, meaning the public defender. So that would solve problems about having, having people in this, in this facility. Uh, I also took uh, Nathaniel over. Hold, hold on a second. Go. You, you say the public defender wants to utilize the one in the courthouse. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So he can meet with his people there and not, okay. Right. And I'm, I'm sorry, I probably, yeah. I'm thinking faster or I'm talking faster and one of the two is not engaged. <laughs> but. I was going to tell you that. Nah, yeah. Yeah. He That's likes, good. and by the way, he said from time to time he might make a, an appointment, but most of the time they don't show up. He called it infrequent where they would be in the uh, annex. He would like to look at three or four or four and five. He doesn't want to be deep in the facility. If he does have somebody coming in, he wants them to come in and get right there and then come out. So. And he needs two offices? Yeah. One for Tam him and one for an assistant. Yes. Or an Tammy. administrative yes. assistant. So, I mean, these are all tentative things. I'm trying to paint a picture so you can even, whether you even want me to negotiate with the state about having them here or whether you just don't want to mess with it. So, so is this pretrial service, are they going to have a full-time person in Nager County? They do. She is from Christman. Okay. Yeah, Christman. And I can never remember her name. But I've been working with the the area supervisor and the area supervisor for getting offices. And they said that this would work great. Now, that figures out to about 1700 or a year for that one office. So now if we can get Nathaniel over, that will save us about $18,000, which would be more than enough to pay for the utilities, at least now, if they don't keep jacking them up. So. At any rate, that's, they would like to be, uh, the court security or a pretrial would like to be into the facility, say like February 1st. So that's, this is a new service with this new law, the Safety Act? Yes. They're going to have a permanent facility, or a permanent person here. She's very nice, and I'm sorry I can't remember her name. She didn't have a card, so I didn't get it, but at any rate, and uh, she would interview folks right, right at the courthouse, and she'd do her work and files and contacts and so forth at, uh, at her office if we decided to let her do that, 22, yes. And there's no need or benefit from putting Nathan and this position together? It's not like they would be communicating? Well, she wants to be off to this, okay. yeah, I don't think... Well, and that things could still communicate. Sure, I just talking. didn't know if we, if we were looking at a like, 3, 4, 5. Or I'll ask. Yeah, yeah. That. No, that's fine. The only thing I'm concerned about in the front of the office is, remember, it's going to be a couple of months till we even get folks in there. Uh, we're working right now. Well, I'm not. Ross is working on getting 
uh, fiber in there and so we can do it the best way we can and get the communication set up and the computers and everything else. In and place. Boom. Right. The state does need computer right away. They would like to have it, you know, to be able to have the uh, the capacity to, but they have uh, they have what do they call hot spots? Mm -hmm. They have hot spots so they can operate with or without the computer or our fiber right now. So the other thing is I don't know whether three might be needed for uh, uh, Dina. I don't know whether Office 29, 30, and 31 plus 32 area is going to be enough. That hasn't been determined yet. So uh, Nathaniel might be slid down a little bit. It's just, I think, basically up to what Dina needs for her to uh, needs. And they may want to also have a copy room. I don't know whether they want to put the copy out here in reception or where they want to do. So there's a lot of things to figure out. So I just want to know from you whether you want me to continue to negotiate with the state and try to get him in here, or whether that's not something you want to do. Is Donnie Bartos going to use any of these rooms? Don, Don, Don is using everything along 60, 61, 62, uh, 23, 27, 26, and 25. And then the conference room that shows large is actually split in half. And so he's using the small room right now, okay. which would be like 28.5 or whatever you want to say. So hopefully, and the, Don wants to move into that area because it's the most secure area. So that's what we're looking at thus far. I don't really see any downfall to it what, with the state of No, it's money we could use for something. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, it's got to make sense, and I think it makes sense. Yeah, but does it? Is anybody opposed to it? Carl. Okay. And I, I, I did talk to the building committee, I think, of all of you about it. I, I was on the phone talking to Lisa about other things and mentioned it to her. So you guys have had some time to think about it. So uh, I don't think we need a motion at this point, do we? I don't think so. Everybody's in agreement that I'll proceed. I mean, I'll make a motion that you continue to negotiate with them, and we don't have any. Oh, that's a good idea. Of them utilizing those. That's fine. Because oh, you know they'll utilize both an office here plus the office or right the room in the courthouse. I think that's great. that's that's not being really not being used. Right. <laughs> and, and we don't have to move the files out of that office. Right. They're just basically, that's a long office. Right. They're just going to use the front part. And we'll neaten right. it up and it'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. I got a second to Carl's motion. I did already. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Sorry. Lud seconds. Quirk. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Okay, we're cool. Uh, that passes. Approval of site plan for the new public safety mm -hmm. facility. Now, that's should what we're doing is asking the board, based upon the recommendation of the building committee, to new, move forward and tell the architect that we basically are, we see this as basically the final layout, subject to change, either by financial or by uh, state law or other provisions that we might find so that they can proceed to have CORE start working up their uh, their cost estimates and making changes in uh, materials and structure that will make it advantageous for us to be able to build it for the cost that they're, they're guaranteed. So the building committee met uh, at 8 o'clock this morning. We met with the state of Illinois uh, general uh, manager of inspections. He offered us a lot of suggestions, but nothing that he we have to change physically. It was just things that we can do that will uh, help us manage the jail in the future, including the rec, rec area. We can use the same rec area if we allow it to be fresh air. That would be what the most major thing that he talked about. 
but a lot of the others was he had questions about what that meant and what that meant. Did you have anything to add to that, Russ? Uh, they discussed the, the dog pen area for uh, fire safety. Fire. Yeah. An outside area. An outside area so it, if a, you had a fire, and you could just immediately get people out out of the building to this area. And it's like a fenced-in area. Is a fenced-in fenced area, area, probably right behind the exercise area. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, uh, we met about a week and a half ago for about three hours right. in the on a Zoom call with uh, the architect and the designer and core. And there was several of us, the building committee and the sheriff. And, but anyway, we and we come up with this plan, and then this is what the Mr. Bowman looked at this morning, and he he's fine with it. Just other than maybe the fire thing, we need to add that. Um, so he's going to be in con or Michael and him are going to be in contact if they have any questions on anything. Basically, they. They have to, um, the architect will take this plan and get dimensions on a, a, a drawing and then Department of Corrections has to make approval of that. And I guess I had, we didn't, I hadn't heard that before. I mean, no, I know that. And that's just something Michael said, well, right. when we started talking oh, to him. Right, talked the other day and then the sheriff immediately got on the phone with Mr. Bowman and got you know, set up for him to come this morning, and which was excellent. Yeah, so and he was very, very helpful. Very. This helpful. was not a antagonistic. No. There was nothing. Yeah. It was productive. And he was complimenting on the sheriff and his staff. You know, everybody's aware of the issues that we've had. You know, a few years ago, the fact that we got that turned around and got everything working and with no violations, and he was very complimentary of us. On everything and complimentary to the board and, and working with the sheriff coming up with this right and this has been quite a process we've right. gone several well, four five six meetings and every time we get it refined and this is what we've come up with right and I think he was very impressed with what we came up with. Yeah. He said he liked it yes so anyway I wanted everybody I think we all need to say okay this is basically it turn it over to them so they can start coming up with uh, the final, not the final designs or architectural drawings, but at least move it to the next step. So we can get approval from DOC. He said it'd only take four or five days once he got it, and uh, we'll go from there. So, motion to approve this preliminary design for the architecture and forward. Okay, okay. Lud, Phil Second. Booz, Russ Seconds. Call the roll, please. Bruner. Yes. Ellis. Yes. Farnham. Yes. Lawton. Yes. Ludington. Yes. Good. You want to vote? Yes. Voight. Uh, <coughs> is, well, there can't be anything else to come before the meeting. Uh, on the other note, obviously, as soon as I get a preliminary uh, lease set up, you'll get it. So we can, you'll make the final decision on whether we'll go ahead with the lease for the state. Just want to note that. Motion to adjourn. I got one question. On yes, the sir. January 11th. Yes. What time is that? I don't know. Okay. Uh, do and you want me to know? What's that? The January 11th walk through. Uh, I think it's one or one thirty. It's after lunch. And what day? There's no. It's, it's the same as board meeting. Uh, the same day as your board meeting. Oh, it is. So it's on a Wednesday. It's on a Wednesday. Okay. I'm sorry. I think sorry. it's at one or one thirty. Okay. All right. I didn't remember. But we will. What, what does that exactly say again? Eleventh. What, what are we doing on the eleventh? Some. Well, we have a board meeting in the morning, and right. then there's a walkthrough with the bidders for the roof at at okay. the courthouse on one at one one thirty. I assume That's Michael. Two, so. okay. I assume Michael and Core will be here. Uh, Core will be at least. I okay. don't know whether Michael will right. be, but certainly Core will be. I think it's just going to be Core. Yeah. I think cause that makes sense because they're the ones that yeah right. do the construction part, and they're the ones that have been communicating, which is key to making sure we get a bid. And if we get one, we get two. Yeah. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's man, very important. But they definitely said they'd be here for that. They're yeah. the ones that want to walk through. Okay. So. Yeah.
they want them to understand everything that's going on. Okay, and then when do you know off the top of your head when's the dead or uh, the when do the bids have to be in? The advertisement goes out the paper this weekend. I moved it up to this weekend so it'd be before. Originally I was gonna we were gonna advertise I think on the fourteenth or something. Yeah, that was too late. But the the walkthrough is gonna be eleventh, so I moved it up to this weekend and then I believe bids are due by January thirty first. Okay, the end yes. of the month. Okay. And they needed several days to review core did. And I think bid opening was gonna be somewhere around the second or third. I think it's the week the week before I don't have the thing right in front of me. Before, I believe before a board meeting. Or it's a couple days before, something like that. I think okay. it's the first first week first week of February. Yeah, they need a couple of days to review. Uh, so then once it's all reviewed and they find it's good, then we can approve maybe. Yeah, it's it's set up for you to be able to approve it at your board meeting following. The, the February. Eighth of February. Yeah. Okay. I think they were going to let's see if it's an advertisement here. Yeah, I think they were gonna well, I don't That's know. That's fine. That's all in. If we had it all timed out. I so the 31st is when the bids will open. And then they'll have yep. seven days to review the bids yep. and make a recommendation to the board. Good deal. And that will be a live opening that morning, too, on the 31st. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll the notice will be sent out. Yeah, well, anybody who wants to can be here. It's a public opening on the 31st okay. here at our office. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Russ moves. Second. Blood seconds. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. We are adjourned. We've got a uh, brief, I do, but we don't have any more. Years ago. Uh, so we're a little bit we'll into the study session. Mm -hmm. Russ is here to make a report. So, Russ, All right. please. Um, so, Lisa sent me some great information. Uh, the FCC is doing a uh, program for people to review broadband coverage across the United States. Um, and that trickles down to the individual states' uh, offices pushing to get people to review the, the FCC map. The official FCC map uh, is broadband.fcc.gov. Basically, at this point, all the state is asking is that anybody and everybody go there, do a search on your home address, your business address, and verify that, yes, you do have access, no, you do not have access, and who can provide access to those locations. Uh, based on that feedback, you can actually issue a challenge saying, um, no, they don't have access here, and not from this carrier, and not from that carrier. Um, so basically, if you search like your home address, It'll zoom in, you'll see a pen, it'll be red or green. Green means, theoretically, you have broadband access. Red means you don't. Um, if you click on the pen, it'll bring up another window and it'll list all of the providers that say they can get you broadband service. Broadband service by FCC definition is 25 megabit, megabits download and 3 megabits upload. So if you're getting less than that, you do not have broadband. But carriers vary. Um, so the quality of service does vary, that is not the question at this point. They just want to make sure that the pins are accurate. So as you can imagine, pretty much everywhere in Paris, covered. Um, most of Kansas, pretty well covered. And most of the other actual centers of population are sort of covered for the most part. It's when you get out into the country that it starts getting super sketchy. Um, and that's kind of what they're trying to capture is, you know, do you actually have it or not and can you get it? They don't, they aren't asking, can you afford it? I, I asked that question in the meeting and they said, nope, we don't care about that right now. I'm like, that's great because nobody can afford broadband these days, but hey, whatever. Um, so basically they want you, want everybody to raise awareness to go to this site, um, search your addresses, verify the information. Uh, if you do not have access, you can actually issue a challenge right there on the site. Uh, that challenge will then get logged to the FCC's main database, and they will provide a list of people who say, hey, you're lying to me, to all the different providers. And at some point or another, it will come down to the providers to basically follow up with, hey, what do you mean we don't have access here? I mean, our map says you know, that kind of thing. Um, it does include cellular coverage, even though cellular coverage generally sucks. Uh, it does include uh, the satellite stuff, like the, the SpaceX and all the other cool geosynchronous, uh, HughesNet, um, all the options are there. 
you can filter your search terms down to uh, physical lines, uh, cab uh, copper cable, uh, fiber optics, so you can narrow it down to see what different options are being flagged as, yes, they are available. Um, so like I said, right here, right now, by January 13th, they want us to raise awareness in Edgar County and get everybody on this site to verify that they actually do have access. That's the gist of it. The reason for this being that if the state of Illinois can prove that we have a need, they, the state of Illinois can then uh, request grant money from the federal government, which they can then in turn provide to telecommunications providers, uh, carriers, to improve services in the areas that need improvement. So that's the gist of it. Yeah. Good question. It, I didn't know whether Gary would be here or not. It's a shame. But, um, or were you going to try to call Gary? And, and tell him about this, maybe he can do an article on it? Okay, yeah, that's not a problem. Well, if we yeah, don't, no one's going to know about it. Right. Yeah, they, they sent me press release material, but they, they said January 13th, and January. I just, I about fell out of my chair. I'm like, really? We're just now hearing about this, and January 13th is what you got. And, but that's their deadline to get the information to the FCC. That's been around for uh, I'd imagine months. It has, but, yeah. We looked at it before well, but a year ago, so but yeah, it's, they've so, been all through, been multiple deadlines. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, on Frontier, mm -hmm. they're advertising in our area 18. Yeah. What is it? A mega? 25 meg down, 3 meg up is qualified as broadband. Okay, but if I only have 18, mm -hmm. do I say no, I don't have it? It depends. When you search your address, you'll see a list of the providers and the speeds that they report that they they can provide so to you. Pro if it meets what they're saying, they can, and, That's and, you're, what and, you're, and you're receiving that. But the big thing is, the, the thing this round is they want to make sure that, yes, indeed, Frontier can provide you a service. They don't care about the quality. They don't care, care about the price. Can Frontier get you internet service? Well, they're causing, calling it broadband. Yeah. Uh, and well, they're advertising. Yeah. And I've got a thing on, on here that says yeah. broadband. Marketing and they is don't great. Technic, then you call <laughs> them, and they can only give you 18, right. not 25. Right. So that's like using your cellular coverage, uh, Verizon, for instance, right. or, or, or AT&T, either one. They don't reach broadband until you get into the 5G areas, and that's downtown Chicago type of thing. Then right. you're going to start seeing those speeds. But out here in the boonies, you're not. Yeah, okay. yeah. Max, we get 4G. Yeah. And please explain also, because I've talked to Chad Ellis about this a little bit too, broadband is kind of a generic term. Mm -hmm. So it can be a, a variety of different ways that you receive your internet. Yeah. So, because that was, that was my question, like, define broadband. <laughs> right. And he's like, um, generic. Broadband is a, the pipeline between you and the internet. Uh, it's not dial-up. That's a bonus. But some broadband is about as fast as dial-up. Here, one more. Like I said, the max that Frontier could provide to our office was less than one meg. Yes. That's why we um, end up going with Metro. Yeah, so, so with the dedicated fiber pipe, we actually have the ability to upgrade it to greater speeds just because we have fiber now. Um, so the problem is that the federal government has uh, provided telephone companies the go-ahead to stop maintaining copper lines. That's a thing. So eventually when you call them and say, hey, a tractor ran over my box out in the field, they're going to be like, sorry, use a cell phone. Well, they quit, they quit maintaining them in my neck of the woods. Yeah, and they pretty much have. Since I heard about them retiring the whole copper line thing, I've noticed that there's a lot more bags over busted boxes. So, um, but that also means that business lines. So our PRI at the jail that's feeding all the phone systems, yeah, Frontier doesn't have to maintain it anymore. If something happens to it, it's in their best interest because we pay a lot of money for it. And that's, the, that's the, the shift from a home service to a business service. They'll fix the PRI, but if it's home service, you're paying 50 bucks a month for a copper line coming to your house, you're not probably If you're in the bother. middle of nowhere, you're SOL. Yeah, if you're much, in the yeah. center of Paris, yeah. they're yes. probably going to fix it because So the, the push for broadband internet is uh, also a push for better telecommunications because more and more cell phones are coming with the ability to connect to Wi-Fi if the cellular service is crappy. So it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. But with uh, most of the companies around here are starting to try and push fiber. It was hilarious uh, for the new building. I called Frontier because they had already contacted me and said, oh, yeah, yeah, we can get you fiber there. No, no, they can't. Not not in downtown Paris, Illinois. They can't get you fiber. So Frontier's out. 
One more question for you. You said that what this thing, the satellite internet does count? It does. It's I said when I looked it at it before, listed. that's what screwed us last time is because pretty much everybody claims you get satellite internet in your county if you click on their thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, the other thing with the FCC broadband map is uh, if you look at the state of Illinois, you know, zoomed out, the state of Illinois is 100% covered. Everybody has broadband. Yeah, and then you start zooming in and you start seeing in the rural areas where it starts gap, gap, zooming a little more, bigger gap, bigger gap. So lo and behold, it's main, main cities where there's a high population of people who are willing to pay for broadband services and they're willing to invest in the infrastructure and maintain. So, out here in the boonies, we're kind of out of luck. This, pro this, this program provides money to the state of Illinois to provide to telecommunications companies to lay more lines. Whether that happens in this area is anybody's guess. They have been doing a little bit. They yeah. ran fiber down just in the house on Midwestern Gas. They've yeah. done some of those little micro cells around Paris. They've done a little bit, yeah. but they were giving them a lot of money to run stuff to one house, but they wouldn't pay to run like to Medcalf or Hume. Right. That was too many people. Yeah. So yeah. the programs are designed um, for a house, two or three houses, not for 50 houses. And and as a head chief of Kansas, Illinois, I, I understand the fight because basically we technically have coverage through Mediacom, which is solid in most parts of town. Uh, Frontier, forget about it. Uh, and then we've got some wireless providers. Well, the only wireless, wireless provider in the area. Um, and even that's super spotty, because you get to be out on the edge of town close to one of those towers. So the, there have been some rumblings about people interested in dragging fiber into town and going to the house, but the cost to put that kind of in, you know, investment in a town of 600-ish people is crazy. You're, it's going to be a hard fight to see your money back, basically. Um, because before you do that, you need to be able to verify that there are people who are willing to pay $100 a month uh, for fiber to the house. Most people in Kansas don't understand that fiber to the house means that your connection is not subject to rain. <laughs> or getting you know trees blowing down over lines. It is subject to backhoes, as uh, some of the local fiber providers discovered the other a couple weeks ago. Um, so, yeah, most of the little towns are still going to be hard pressed. Um, it's kind of like the, the the old Marie Antoinette let them eat cake. Yeah, let them use cellular. That's that's kind of the way it feels to me. So. She never Can I live on to my part? Yep. Since it's all related. <laughs> yep. Okay. And Ross, you I included you on some emails. I, I get a lot of emails. emails. You have to be more yeah. specific. <laughs> so I I don't know what I just got us into. But, um, I'll just say that That's up not front. the way to start. <laughs> but I'm sure it's all positive that uh, Wyatt Williamson from Farm Bureau and I worked to put together an application for a broadband project that the main driver is Illinois Soybean Association. And it was only an opportunity to, I believe it was eight counties. And basically, we had to complete this application to talk about our need and to show that we had some partners. And so then we were accepted. So the box has been opened. Um, and so Jeff, Jeff provided the cover letter, and he got the acceptance email. And it said that they strongly recommend a team of at least 15 individuals in your county to be on this, this committee. Um, and the first meeting is January 12th, so I took the day off. I'm headed up there, and then I was reading more closely today. And it, it says you should probably bring three people. There should be three there. So, um, Ross, are you available January 12th? Because somebody needs to be the interpreter. <laughs> um, I mean, I can be. I don't see that that. Any major problem. It's at the new Illinois Soybean Association uh, facility in Bloomington. I was going to try to go. Okay, that'd be three. Okay. Yeah, Jeff can totally interpret. <laughs> Four would be even better. Are you available as well? Uh, when is it 12? Thursday. 
Yes. Most likely. Okay. I don't know anything on top of my head right now. All right. I'll get more information. It would be better. It would be nice if Wyatt would go. It would, wouldn't it? I'll ask him. All right. Well, we'll make it a party. You're right. <laughs> really, the more the better. Well, the thing is, if we start with four or five, if somebody has to boogie, we'll still have three or four, or yeah. we have four... Somebody can't go, then we'll have three. He did that in my head. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Don't you think? Mm hmm And I can drive. You don't need a bus? Oh, <laughs> he can drive. <laughs> I don't charge much. It'd be cheaper if he drives. So, um, we're bus? just now finding out what we're getting into. I tell you, I was sitting at Mass on Christmas Eve, and I was trying to focus. And I look across the way, and Terry Sullivan was there, and he was already on my short list. So I said, hey, sorry to do business in a church, but... So he'd love to be on it. And I said, you know anybody else over your way? And he's like, yeah, Jim Roll, which I've known Jim forever. And he's like, Jim loves tech. And I'm thinking, and Jim is retired. Because it's going to require a, a chairman or, or a couple of committee chairs. And so I got my eyes out looking for a committee chair. So this is the first meeting, and then we're going to have um, monthly uh, Zoom calls. So just to let you know, we're going to do something. I don't know quite the details yet, but the focus is looking at broadband in the rural areas. And because the Soybean Association is a driver on this, um, that's how we are, are able to do this in the rural areas, is looking at agriculture. So, you know, if it, if it helps a farmer, <clears throat> if we get it to a farmer, we're also getting it to small communities, we're getting it to agribusinesses, and we're getting it to families. So basically, it's a whole rural area. So. All those dead zones. Awesome. Yes. Probably the only way anything is going to happen. <clears throat> yes. So I called and talked to Chad Ellis, who provides our internet service. <clears throat> basing it off of water towers, towers, green legs, and um, he said he wanted to keep a price, but he probably wouldn't be an active member. <clears throat> so no, I, th I think we won't have any trouble getting the 15 people. It'll be, hopefully it's not like herding cats, trying to keep us all organized. So, all right, that's all I have. Any questions about that? Okay. Uh, do you have anything else while you're on a roll? <laughs> yeah, Paycom. Um, Morgan, Morgan from Paycom has set up a meeting, um, which is at 10 o'clock uh, on the 10th, I believe. Um, but anyway, because that will be a touch base after the first uh, go live pay cycle with Paycom. And I think it would be beneficial if we could have Don and Pam maybe come to the next county board meeting just to give us a, a bit of an update, or maybe not until February. But okay. And you are uh, just to get back. You are going to get a hold of Gary and maybe give him the press release. Yeah, they they sent me some press notes. I'll just try to start it for a couple I can weeks. put it on the website. I can spread it around Facebook. Do whatever you can. Um, yeah, spread no. the word. That way, if they come back and say, how come you didn't do anything? Oh, no. I, I, the, the three ladies that were on the call, uh, I, I think, were shocked that I showed up. So. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Make sure he uh, to ask him to put it on their website because that gets shared by several different people. If you can get past the paywall, but sure. Okay. Scotty, did you have anything you wanted to add from earlier comments? No, I'm good. Are you good? Did you have any discussion on the mobile food thing at your meeting? Uh, are they it, still working on that? It, they're going to have that presented at our next meeting, I see. which will be ready for you guys. It was just not on the agenda. I we forgot to get it on there. Yeah. I think it bears, but I, I know that Scotty and I have talked several times, and I know Lisa's involved, but the whole attitude, and I think you saw it with uh, Monica, is that we're moving forward. And I think everybody should have that in their minds that what's happened in the past, good, bad, or indifferent, is in the past. 
we've got a new administrator, we've got everybody pulling together, hopefully we've got a good board, and that's the way we should look at it, is just, we're gonna, everything's gonna be improving all the time. Any agency that doesn't want to improve is an agency that's in trouble. So that's, you know, kind of like our lives. If we're not doing something, we're in trouble. So at any rate, that's, I just wanted to make that comment. Did One you? more thing. Uh, we did vote to uh, contract with Bellwether for the year uh, for a flat fee per month, which I thought was very reasonable. And then for an additional fee, they will come on site. They will also... Um, review their manual, their their employee handbook, which really needs reviewed. So I think that it's a really good investment for Monica's first year because you know she doesn't know the, the ins and outs, nor will anybody about how to be an administrator if you haven't been in that kind of a role. So I think it's a great investment. She's been using them quite a bit. Uh, I think that that will definitely help make sure that they get on the right track. Any, any other board member have a comment? Okay. Love, have you got anything? Mm -hmm. Dan? I just talked to Andrew last week. Everything's cool. Mm -hmm. No problems. Had to be tough weather for the oh, pups and trying to be a dog. <laughs> taking care of everybody. Right. And, I mean, it had to be miserable mm -hmm. over the weekend and you said Thursday. Fine. She likes the uh, new guy. Good Are they job. both feeling better? Yeah. Good. Moving back to work. Uh, I have a personal story on Andrea, a, a personal experience. Somebody had to, was trying to find out who to report some horses that are in really bad shape. And through communication, Andrea called and mm -hmm. said, you know, I'm the, I'm the one that will be doing that. Who is it? And um, Andrea was going to be put in a pretty tough con uh, position to have to deal with it, and she did. Good, good. So, she, does, she does a great job. She really does. People don't realize just how good job she does. Yeah, so it's not just puppies and kitties. It's no. it's all livestock as right. well. And that, right. Even though she won't be the, she's not the one that can actually mm -hmm. deal with it. She's the one who has to be the, right. prime, the original point of contact, even when it's tough. Mm -hmm. I just want to the thing you put on my flip phone, which I couldn't really read very well, but from, I didn't uh, put it on there. So, no, you did. No, that's right. On the uh, you're doing asking for donations. You find out anything about that? Mm -hmm. I didn't either. I, didn't either. Yeah, I don't know if you all saw that or remember that I somebody did. was asking for donations for the yeah. for through, them, and uh, it was not through Facebook. Right? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was not uh, one us. official. No. Actually, no, but I just thought I should share that. Yeah, well, that's yeah, you know. one of who did it. We need to get a new phone. Flip phones out of day. Hey, Jesus. My flip Carl, did you have a comment or question? Yeah, I, I remember you bringing up several weeks ago about the new doors out there. You said the building committee, I don't know that we ever discussed it or did she got new doors yet? I, 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 I don't I believe so. I, they had to order them. So, she knows to go ahead with it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That was my question. No, I, I talked yeah, to her myself. Time. Okay. It's one of those deals that's going to take forever, you know, everything to yeah, multiply okay. by plus. I didn't know whether it got dropped, mm -hmm. or whether we dropped the ball, or whether something got No, we going. told her to go ahead and do it. All right, good deal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Carl? I don't have anything. Augie, do you have anything? I do not. I think we've covered a lot. I don't really have anything unless you've got questions specifically on me. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Russ moves. Dan seconds. All those in favor yeah. signify by saying aye. Hey, hey. Opposed, nay. We've got time for this. We're good. Anybody who will know.